Delta program. I'm currently in their certificate program. I did my internship with them last year. And my internship project was to build cases for our fourth year students um, to help to help increase their diagnostic competency. Basically, like what I said, give them some more experience. And we did a pre-post test model to see if we were actually helping them out. Um, so that, that is kind of what I'm showing you here. So the, the case scenario builder cases we put up in Moodle, and they're pretty, you know, pretty typical um, case scenario. Um, they're, uh, you know, we, we have some A-B stuff in here for, for them at the load. Um, it was a pretty linear case structure, so they would work through it, and they have to stop at various points to do multiple choice questions when they get incorrect answers. They get feedback for that, um, and then uh, when they get correct answers, they're able to move them through. Um, so just kind of showing you that's a, a correct answer, we're allowed to continue, ask them to do some work um, off the module, write some stuff down, make some lists of their differential diagnoses, the problems that they've identified. Um, so here, localizing the disease, um, an incorrect answer, they get that it's incorrect, and then they're given some reasons why it's incorrect until they, um, until they select the correct answer, which allows them to continue. Um, and I, I tend to design these as fairly kind of a low cost um, situations or low pressure situations. I don't grade them while they're doing it. I want them to not have that you know, added pressure of, oh God, if I answer the wrong question, it's you know, kind of the point. Um, because, you know, this is a scary thing for them to work through. Uh, thinking about real life, I think that's pressure enough knowing that someday they're going to have an animal's life in their hands. So I want their experience now to be, to be um, low stakes. So um, as part of the Delta program, then I came to John's course, Effective Teaching with Technology, which I took last semester. Um, and basically the assignment was to build your own course in Canvas. And I was like, oh, well, I love doing these cases. I want to see if I can apply this to the third year course. Um, so we tried to import my uh, CSCR modules into Canvas, and that we tried that for about 10 seconds, and it didn't work. So I decided that I needed to rebuild the cases um, actually in Canvas directly. As you can see, so this, the cases that I did for the internship project were diseases, were respiratory diseases of cats. I decided to do gastrointestinal diseases of dogs. Um, so they're not a one-to-one -one comparison. I didn't just you know, make a shot for shot remake in Canvas. I decided to do it, do a slightly different um, medical problem. So this is the course that I built, the sandbox course that I built um, for John's class. Um, I've got it in student view right now. I'm gonna walk you through the case that I built and then I will show you the back end at the end. Um, so it's set up, they enter it through the assignments page. Um, and then basically all it really is is I'm using the Canvas pages um, in a linked model. So basically, like you would put together a linked PowerPoint, which is how I actually got introduced. That was the first way I started building cases with the PowerPoint. Um, so I kind of took that background, which is a little bit messier than how you do in a case scenario builder, um, and applied that to, um, to what I was doing in, in Canvas. So let's see, that's the opening page for the assignment. This takes links to the actual wiki pages, and again, we've got basically multiple choice questions for the student, you know, they look at some nice pictures in there. Um, the, so just, uh, again, these are multiple choice pictures where we're, we're linking to the correct page, so for the different pages. So if I click on an incorrect answer, this time instead of getting a pop-up like you would in Case Scenario Builder, it actually just takes you to a different page. Um, but the same thing, I would say, you know, give them reasons why why they were incorrect, and then they get to go back. And they're not, again, they're not allowed to move forward until um, until they get the question correct. And then they can move forward. So the picture of the diarrhea. <laughs> um, and so here again, I'm asking them to come up with their differentials on a separate piece of paper. Um, I really love to find a way to be able to do that within the program. Um, case scenario builder really didn't allow it in either. I couldn't find a way to do it in Canvas, but there might be ways to do it. Um, but at this point, they're just we're doing their um, long, long answer, basically the long answer question. Um, they're 
to the diagnostic section. So when the, the students are choosing tests to do, short answer questions are no longer possible in Kansas. Um, so you're not allowed to, I guess I know with the CSCR you can give a right. like long paragraph and the instructor reads it but not for credit. So. I don't have a good way of doing that because I'm just using page, I'm using the wiki pages. Okay. But if there was some way to link into a link in and out of the quiz, we think that that might be possible. And that's something that I think John's going to have a good floor today. Yeah. Discussion forum, have you looked at that for the long answer? No, but that could be really cool.
there's no file structure within these pages. So, so every page has to have a unique name, and there's no way to order them in a logical way. So it's hard for me to jump into the middle of this thing, let alone for my student to jump into the middle of this thing. Now you could, you could potentially like set up the, your assignments, like if you're gonna use the assignment as the gateway into the pages, you could have, you know, assignment one be start at the middle and assignment two, or sorry, have assignment one start at the beginning and have assignment two start at a, at a different page. And that would be one way to do it. But um, really, to, to kind of see the overarching structure of the case is completely lost in the way that I'm able to interface with Canvas, which made it really important for me to be mapping on a separate piece of paper or in, um, in uh, Excel or something like that. So yeah, that's kind of where I am with this. It's, it's usable. I haven't used this case with my students. I've only used the ones that I have in the own case scenario builder, but I think, I think it's pretty usable. I made the um, pages not visible to the students, because otherwise they're going to be able to get in here and be like, oh my god, what are we doing? So it would be difficult if you were running <coughs> cases in the same course at when you wanted students to be able to, you know, interface with the pages directly, because there's, because there's no file structure. And I think that if I were to redo this, I would do some sort of serial number for pages rather than saying exactly what they are. And it wouldn't look as nice. Yeah. It wouldn't look as nice when we clicked on it. Because be that's what's going on. Right. I mean, I can make, 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 I yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I worry a little bit about like having them ordered in in such a way that that the titles and the pages might give away some hint, like might be hinty to the students. Um, but yeah, I think I think that that 